everyone. Welcome to my Saturday Live. Running a few minutes late, but I'll um, get this video started. We're, we're going to be having a look at our mini cut and emboss with the new Savings uh, in Bloom sale that we have on at the moment. It's running until the end of March, and I thought I'd show you that and how to set it up. So I've just bought myself the mini emboss cut machine. We're also going to have another look at the Ways of Inspiration suite and um, I'll be able to show you that on our on our website and, and how to order that one as well as show you how to make some cards. Let's get started. I've got my box here all pre-opened. I'm just going to open it at the side. So once you open up the box you will have this mini stamp and cut and emboss quick start guide and it's all in the wrapped beautifully in plastic I'm just going to take that one away you have your embossing folder which is number four you insert the embossing folders hinge first what's this this is number three this is four Okay, so this one's for your 3D embossing folder and this one is for your standard embossing folders. You also have your two plates and, num and your number one plate. So similar to the big, big um, cut and emboss machine, just mini. Alright, so inside the box you'll have all of your instructions. Just mind me, I'm just reading as I'm going along. So inside the box you'll have your cut and emboss machine, your mini uh, base plate, two mini cutting plates, mini embossing plate and also a 3D embossing plate which we do so that's checked. This also comes with a three year limited warranty. Okay, using the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. So let's grab him out and see what he looks like. Oh he's so cute. Oh, he's even got the handle on. So with the large one, I had to put the, the handle on. This one we don't. Look at that. <laughs> Simple. So to use, you pull down both sides like that. Then you insert your sandwich that you would like to, to use. So... Let's have a look. We'll just get the waves of inspiration and we'll see what dies can fit. So most small dies will be able to fit in the mini. Just the larger ones will need the, the large um, cut and emboss machine. So I'm just going to... Let me see if I can find some scrap paper. Oh. So I've just grabbed some scrap Daffodil Delight. Now I'm just going to have a look here. Um, Alright, so all of the instructions are on the plate. So we need to put down number one first. And then a cutting plate, number two. It's going to be a shame to mark it, isn't it? <laughs> and then we put down... Please do cutting edge down. So we've got to put our paper first. Oh, I've got to trim that down so it fits. Okay, so I'm just trimming off at the side here so that way. Okay. So I cut that down to three and a half inches. So I'm going to put my cardstock down first. And I'm going to, I think I might cut out a little couple of banners. And we'll be able to use these on our card today. So I'm just putting the banners down. If you wanted to, you can use your washi tape. Oops, oh, sorry, probably can't see. You can use your washi tape to hold that in place. So 
I'm just grabbing that here. This is a bit exciting. I don't have any embossed folders yet to fit the mini. I'll have to have a look. So when I'm finished here, I'll show you in the catalog how you know whether it's going to fit in your mini or not. So I'm just putting that down there. Then you put number two plate on. Maybe I should line that up so it's nice and even. And then I'm just going to hold him down, push him in a little bit. There we go. And then just take him through. You'll hear all of the cracking and creaking, which is normal. Oh, that's quite firm. <laughs> but that's good. There we go. It's just not easy when you're doing it on paper either and it's sliding around. Um, here we go. So as you can see, just grab that. And then these are our pieces here. So they've cut through beautifully. <laughs> Okay, everyone's home. Probably hear everyone walk in the door in a minute. Um, so I'm just pulling this all off the cardboard and then I'll pop those away. And then just putting that, put that away just for this moment. lost my train of thought here that's what I'm going to show you the catalog so to, to know whether your mini will be able to use the dies and emboss folders it will have a little image here at the side which will let you know that you can use your mini if it doesn't have an image beside it you'll know that the larger dies won't be able to be put through to, to cut. And same goes with the emboss folders. I'll just see which way. I always get lost in my catalogue. I haven't marked it. So my emboss folders here. So the ones that aren't marked are for the large die cut machine and then you have your mini as well here so checks and dots is for your mini so it, it just shows you where you can use that at the moment with your mini the savings is 20% off and I'm just going to switch my screen so that way you can see my screen I'm just going to shrink this one down so savings are in blue is where you will find the sale and you go in the sales tab so stampinup.com.au and then sales and specials savings are in blue and then it will take you straight to the page here there it is I was already on that so it wouldn't <laughs> load I was wondering what was happening um, so in the Savings of Bloom you will see here all of the bundles that are available and absolutely beautiful, 20% off and then there is your cut and emboss machine as well. This art gallery bundle is exclusive as you can only get the stamp set. Um, you can still get the dies but they're separate, you can't buy them in the bundle so if you want that that's a really good good buy. So that's that one there. So that's, that's quite easy um, to, to find. It's in the sales and specials tab. Let's go to the waves of the ocean. I've got my little tags here for our sentiments. And it's so compact. Look at that. It does have the rubber feet, so it doesn't slip. I just had it on my thing there, so yeah, that's why it was slipping around. 
but it's so neat and compact it's very light nicely to travel with as well nice little add added to my collection Let's put that all over to the side okay so the waves of the ocean we had a look at this last week I opened it all up I, I'm not going to spend too much time going through it but these are the dies that you can purchase separately or also in a bundle with the stamp set um, I've just got to remember to flick my screen back so that way you can see <laughs> so the dies here you have your waves and for your takes for the sentiments birds and everything there and also your waves of inspiration stamp set um, great sentiments your strength as an inspiration is probably one of my favorites and I've made a card for a couple of friends with that one also in the bundle you have rhinestones your paper which you saw me cut I keep one you get two pieces of the six designs so I keep one at 12 by 12 and I cut the other in half for my cards so I also like the scrapbook and you also get your blue foils and specialty paper the coordinating colors for this bundle um, I've just got my ink pads to, to show you, is Knight of Navy, Pacific Point, Coastal Cabana, Granny Apple Green, Daffodil Delight, Calypso Coral, and Petal Pink. Very strong, bold, beautiful colours with a couple of pastels thrown in. And these are the different colours in the cardstock. This is what I love about Stampin' Up. You can have your inks, cards, pens, blends, everything matching in. So I'm going to choose a colour here. I'm going to go... I think I'm going to go the... I'll use the base is Calypso Coral. This is an A4 size. You can get A4 and 12 by 12 size paper I use the A4 to make cards because you can either cut it in half at 10 and a half centimeters or for a standard portrait card you can cut it in half at 14.9 that will give you two card bases I love this trimmer. The trimmer has a blade and also a scoring and an extendable arm so that way you can go straight out to 17 inches. It has all of the measurements so if you're using 6x6 paper you can use the bottom measurement as well as the top. It has a clear bar to hold down your paper and it's just um, so easy to use. So ten and a half is the middle of the cardstock and you use the scoring blade. I always fold against the score line so that way the paper doesn't crack. Some papers will crack. I haven't had any issue with the Stampin' Up! one papers doing that but it's just a force of habit now that I, I've got myself into. So score again at ten and a half. And that's the base. I've been a little bit quiet this week. It's been busy and I've caught myself a head cold, which I'm on the end of. Thankfully, it didn't hang around. <laughs> and thankfully that the um, the COVID test came back negative. I was a bit worried, but anyway, it didn't. It was all negative, which is great. So they're still standing up a little bit. So I'm just going to fold it. Down. This is a bone folder and it helps uh, burnish the, the paper so that way it it's, um, has nice creases in there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the um, 
layer, it's the first layer for the card and it's going to be 14.4 by 10 centimeters and I'm going to use the foil paper. Now the foil is here and I'm going to use a different color. Last week I used the dark blue which was this guy but I'm going to I don't know if I'm going to use the same one, the Coastal Cabana colour. We've got silver. I might use the Coastal Cabana. Sorry, I'm just off at the side grabbing the cardstock. So it's very reflective. I'll just grab my trimmer again. And I'm going to cut it down to 14.4. So 14.4 centimeters. Just being very careful. By 10 centimeters. And I'm going to cut two of those at that size. Because we're making the two cards. At 10 centimeters. So you can see that we got how many first layer card fronts and 10 with a little strip. That can be decorated on the inside of your card. So I'm just going to put that aside. So you can get six card fronts from a 12 by 12 piece of card. So I'm just going to glue him here. Now my next sized card is going to be 13.7 by 9.3 and I'm going to grab some of the patterned DSP and I'm just going to go through which one is going to look best. I would like some yellow in because we do have the matching the colour Daffodil, Daffodil Delight. And I need, let's have a look here. I think that one's going to be pretty because that's got the blue. It's still pastel light -like colour. I think that would be nice. Let's go with that one. Yes, found it. So with this layer, I'm also going to use ribbon and this ribbon can be found in our um, mini catalog and it's the denim three eighths of an inch or one centimeter ribbon. I'm going to use that with this layer as well. So I'm just going to pop this to the side just so I don't scratch that foil paper because it's really easy to be scratched. So I'm cutting down to 13.7 13.7 by 9.3 so one two three and that's that layer there which will go here. I'm thinking I might make it landscape That's really pretty. I like that. And then same again. 13.7 by 9.3 for the second card. Very pretty. I really do love that paper. Okay, so I do have one more layer left and it's going to be 12.1 by 
by 7.7 .7, and I've just got to find which one that I would like to use. It's a very strong colour. I might go the Granny Apple Green at 12.1. by 7.7 .7 centimetres. Ribbon. I'm just going to have a look and just to see if I'm going to use it. All I wanted was, no I'm actually not keen on that. I think I'm going to leave it by itself. We do have other ribbons but I'm not, they're all too thick would take away from the cards so I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'm going to stamp my little pelican guy here and I'm going to be using the recommended blocks for this stamp set. I'll just grab these here so I didn't show you this earlier. So when you are purchasing through Stampin' Up! On the website, I will just switch the screen again. On, on our website, here, when you click on your stamp set that you would like to purchase, it has down here, show more. So if you click at the side, it tells you how many stamp set stamps are in the set and also the suggested clear blocks that you can use with, with your stamp. So here we have A, which is the little guy, which will be for the birds. Then you have your C block, which will be for some of the sentiments. You have your two panoramic, well, not panoramic, but the rectangle blocks that are long. Um, G and H, they will be for your longer sentiments and you have your E block which will be for your wave so that way you can see here that it will fit your block. Now I'm going to use the pelican and I'm going to use the H block for my pelican. I've laid him down. So with, with my stamps, I like just to let them rest on my, on my paper grid or my grid paper and then pick them up. So that way, like when you peel off, especially with the photopolymer one, not the rubber one, it just lets them go back so it, it does stretch. So I'm going to stamp my pelican. I haven't stamped him before, so I don't know how he's going to turn out. So I'm going to I'm going to use Calypso Coral actually. I'm going to see. So I'm just going to experiment here. This is what I do when I'm just trying to figure out how he stamps. So I'm just going to pop him there. Okay. You keep colouring him in. That's what I might do. So I'll, I'll show you an, a, a quick technique. So with the stamp and write markers, and only the right markers, don't use your blends, because your blends will stain your stamp. If you use your right markers, you can colour in your stamp. So I'm just going to grab... Um, a soft suede and the pelican is white isn't he with an 
orangey colored beak. So I'm just, I just grabbed the Stampin' Right marker and you can get these in a pack of 10 or you can purchase them all at once in the one bundle and that's in our annual catalog as well. I've been purchasing them in the packs of 10. So with the Stampin' Right markers, all you need to do is just colour it in and I'll stamp on the grid paper first so that way you can see how he works out compared to just stamping with the ink. Just colour it through. And I'm also looking at the stamp set just to guide me on the image. So when you finish colouring, all you need to do is, I know this sounds weird, but you puff breath on the ink that you've just um, put on with your pen and it just rejuvenates it. So now I'm just going to just go around my pelican. He's going to be an orangey pelican. <laughs> I was hoping to be able to just do the detail of the feathers. I have to go around his head. So when you go just like that and pressing down, which is cool. And then um, that's how you get a multicolored stamp is by using the stamp and write markers. Yeah. I'm just going to recolor him and I'd really like him raised up, so I'm going to, I don't want to use white, so I'm going to cut off a little bit more of my Daffodil Delight. Actually, I don't need to. I found the other little bit there. So I'm just going to colour that in again. Just with the brush end of my Stampin' Right, because you get your brush end and also your point. And have I forgot to switch my screen back across? <laughs> oh dear, I've got to remember to do that, hey. Let me show you again. So you can see what I have just done without you guys not seeing anything at all. Um, which is, oh, I'm so sorry. So let me go again. So you just color in the step with your blend. Oh, the things we do when we're learning, hey? It's got to remember to switch that screen back. So you colour in like that. And then I grabbed the brush end just to colour in my pelican. And it will just pick up where it wants the colour. And then he's still wet, so... I can just go straight down and stamp. If you were there spending a lot of time colouring, you would breathe on it again. So there is my pelican on standing on the poles. And I actually might go go twice with this guy. So again, just brush. my orange which is pumpkin pie with the brush there we go and then straight down again perfect I like him <laughs> and then if you wanted to you could um, just color in his beak and make him a little bit more defined if you want to, but I'm going to leave him like that. And then you just, um, see sometimes it's a little bit hard to peel. You can take your pick tool, and I'm just going to switch him across 
for the spatula end and he helps you pick up the the cling with the stamp so that way he will peel off nicely because you don't want to peel it off and it come apart from the rubber let's put my lid back on set that aside okay so i'll just grab my die cut again i think i'm a little bit excited to use my mini emboss because it is so light and easy and i'm going to um just grab the pelican die and I'm going to move this out of the way so that way you can see that it actually does just grip and it makes it easier. Okay. Here we go. So this one here, you fold down his arms and he's quite solid there. You get your number one plate, number one, and then number two goes on last. So number two on here, so you've got one nice plate, and then you have your cutting plate, and then you put your card stock down, which is three and a half inches, so that way you know what will fit. Put your die down on the cardstock and then I'm just going to grab my washi tape so grab the washi tape and I'm just going to pop a little bit here just to stop it from moving And then I must have, actually, I've got that around the wrong way, sorry. The one that has the cutting marks in it already goes down first. Then the cardstock and then the die with some washi tape to hold the die in place. I'm just going to grab a little bit more just to hold that pelican's head in place. I'm just going to pop him across there like that. Then number two. Now that's the perfect sandwich. And then you roll him through. I'll oh, see much easier without the cardboard there. Oops. And then it'll go through and click. Nice. I'm just gonna take it this way just so I'm not twisting my wrist the wrong way. And then it straight away cuts him out. I don't know whether I like that yellow on that green. I wonder if I... Oh, it's too late now. Oh no, I'm going to go use the white. It's never too late. <laughs> it's never too late to change your mind. I'm going to use this white cardstock and I'm going to do it all over again. As you can see, we've got beautiful layers there and then the yellow. I'm not keen. And I think I might just do it in plain black. And I'll put some colour into it. So I have completely changed my mind. See, things just don't work. And you've just got to, got to work with that. So I'm just putting... There, my side and my stamp. Grab him again. Just pop him here and my block. I'm going to use the tuxedo black ink. One. Oh, that's better. I feel better now. And two. Clean my stamp. Just peel it off and put it back.
what did I do with my other yellow banner? It has fallen down somewhere, I guess. Okay. It's okay. Oh no, he's up here. Found him. Stop looking, everyone. Now I've got to cut this down. I thought I might have had to, to cut it down. Three and a half is the perfect measurement. Okay. Now, take one, two, your cardstock, your die. And just putting him there so it doesn't move. The two on on there. Push him push him through and hold him down. You'll hear the clicking. Oh, I don't know whether it's because I'm I've got a weak wrist. Sometimes I have trouble, but it's so much easier than the big shot. And then that's him all cut out. Oh, nice. For the second card, I'm just going to take that off. And line him back up again with this one. All lined up. Number two back on top. And rolling through. Oh, that's it. Maybe it's the speed you've got to go. <laughs> Likes it quick. Okay. And that's for the second card. It did move a little bit. Or I didn't line it up properly. But it still looks good. You can always fix that with your paper snips. And I have two pairs of those, so that way I've got one for my ribbon and one for my paper. And that way I know it's always going to be sharp. And I'm just going to pop him in there. And I'm going to put our little mini away. Bring this guy back in. These are our cards. Okay, I am going to fix that up with my paper snips because I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Just going to take some of that width off. I'm going to hold that straight. There we go. Yeah, that looks good. All right. Now I'm just going to um, colour in my bird beak just with the end of the white pen and this guy. Now we also have watercolour pencils and our watercolour pencils coordinate with our colours as well. So I'm just going to find the early espresso colour here. Early espresso. It's old olive. Very rich. Is it this one? No. It'll be the last one I look at. Probably the one that's stuck in the box, right in the corner. Yes, as you can see, he is well used. <laughs> and I'm just going to lightly go over here. And then I'm going to show you our blender pen. I'm just putting a little bit of color through like this. And with the blender, it's going to smooth it out a little bit.
these are our blender pens. I always just make sure that I have got rid of all of the colour before I use it. And then I'm just going to go over that brown pencil and paint in the rest. Like that. Not being too fussy because I want it to look a little bit aged and textured. Just how the stamp wants it, but I'd like a little bit of colour there. Perfect. And then after you finish, just make sure there's no colour on your tip. You can use the blender pens for ink as well. So you probably saw the, the dot there. You can use them to pick up some ink colour and paint with your inks. Okay, it's time to put this together almost. I'm going to put my little sentiment on as well. This one's going to be a little bit smaller. Um, I'm going to put the bird on there as well. Here's my little bird. I'm going to put my bird on the A block and he's going to be the last thing I do. And the sentiment, the cards are coming together. I'm going to... I'm going to do this one as a happy birthday and this one I don't know what one I'm going to use you're totally awesome no, I really do like this strength one I'm going to use that one so I'm going to pop that one on the C block and on my G block I'm going to put happy birthday for my other card there so if you're worried about whether it's straight or not I'm just going to use the lines here to keep it straight and then I'm just going to pick it up so hopefully it looks straight. I don't know, my eyes are a bit funny. Let me try that again. There we go. Okay, so here, happy birthday. I'm gonna use Memento Black. Oh. Is it? It's the Memento Tuxedo Black. And oh, I got a little bit excited. <laughs> That's okay. We can cover that. We'll just put a diamond over the top. Let's pop him away. And this one. making sure nice and straight and then clean the stamp so our card is coming together we're on to our last steps and we're going to put him together I've got some dimensionals here and I'm going to put the dimensionals on my pelican and I have just going to cut so I like using the edges as well especially when you get into the smaller parts of the body of the penguin Oops. I think In half and just taking off all of the papers making sure that's all sticky and I'm putting it onto my granny apple green layer just here beautiful and then I'm going to put 
dimensionals on this one as well. Oh, not upside down. <laughs> and I'm going to pop that just there. Same again with this pelican on this side. I'm going to put a dimensional on his head, his body. That's probably a bit big. Pull his body. Just anywhere that it might say, like not say, but not hold if that makes sense and then just peel off the papers yeah there we go and then for the birthday dimensionals as well and one in the middle. There we go. I'm going to pop him here. And then, before I adhere him onto the next layers, I'm going to stamp my birds. Stamp my burn. I'm just gonna I'm just moving my stuff around so that way you can see. I'm just going to oh oops. Let's have some birds there flying. And the same on this one. bit of ink there. Okay, that's all done. I'd like to put some bling on here. I just want to cover up <laughs> just the ink splotches there. There's the here. Yeah. These are the coordinating gems, the rhinestone waves basic jewels. And I'm going to use some of the colours from the base of the card. Where should I put another little I might put one there? I don't know if let's put a little one whoops here. You can use the take your pick tool if you're having trouble picking up the dimentes. Let's put one there. And I'll just grab another smaller one. Then I'll pop him here as well. Perfect. Now I'm going to, I'm actually, hey, you can never have too much dimension on your cards. I'm going to put one on each corner and one in the middle, maybe three in the middle, taking off the edges there. And then I'm going to adhere him to my next layer using my multi purpose glue. Just going to run some glue over the edge like that. And then line him up. Now, the reason why I like 
using the glue is because you've got a few seconds before it adheres to line it up. And then again on the back of that one. To adhere to your card base. Like that. Make sure it's nice and straight. So that's one birthday card finished. And now for the second. So I will raise him up to put on the DSP. layer onto the first layer I like to pick it up so that way I can see like that and then last layer and then the card is complete cards one happy birthday one to let someone know that their strength is an inspiration it's the two cards there just wanted to say thank you for joining me today for my life and i will see you next week at two o'clock thanks